open sesame into a strange and mystic land, a land of hidden palaces, captive women, and savage fanatics, a land of magic dreams, of romance and adventure, whose head rests on the azure waters of the Mediterranean, and whose feet are buried in the burning sands of Sahara. The beauty of its vales, the rugged magnificence of its mountains, the arid splendor of its desert, all these have created a people of strange and naive dignity, excellent of form and feature, a warlike people who keep serenely and securely within themselves. And they, in turn, have created a fitting wonder of builded cities, towers, minarets, mosques, and fountains, monuments that express as nothing else could the soul of Morocco. It is a country of walled cities. A thousand years ago, these walls went up, seven miles of them. A thousand years ago, the tribesmen came, as they do today. Out of the arid desert, out of the Atlas Mountains, away from the terror of loneliness. This young Riff is a member of that fearless mountain tribe who till very recently defied Christian invasion in Morocco. In the city of delight on earth, the water boy with his goatskin fountain and his tinkling bell. A marabou stork posing on a pole. Mules laden with hides from which that marvelously soft, sweet-smelling leather is made. The beggar with his plea for alms in the name of Allah. The seller of filigree lanterns. The mysterious hooded figures all seem like a dream of Arabian nights. Who visits Morocco finds himself in a world apart where nothing is too fantastic to be true and where truth is stranger than even the fiction of the storyteller. There is extreme poverty in Morocco, but the Moor is a philosopher. He smiles even when his stomach is empty and his body covered with rags. He has a proverb. Manage with bread and butter, it says, until God sends the jam. Down in the sukkah, or marketplace, chaos and good-natured confusion. Here are the rent-free shops of the butcher, the baker, and, of course, Omar the tent maker. The ever-popular snake charmer never fails to get a good audience. And with his band of musicians, receives rapt attention. In America, one buys a bottle of bootleg liquor and becomes his own snake charmer. The singer of strange songs, the flute players, the tom-toms which flare up like torches, then fade away, leaving us forever unsatisfied, the rhythm in our very veins. Evidently, the Moroccan version of I'm Making Faces. The Chlews, those weird little dancing boys, like figures in a frieze. Every turn of the crooked, cobbled streets reveals new scenes of seething native industry. The Moor is proud of his pottery, which is entirely handmade and is worked into a variety of beautiful shapes. Mats with fantastic designs are woven in Morocco. No, the barber's clipper didn't slip. He likes his hair cut that way. 
it's a Eugenie bob. After the mats are woven and washed, they are spread in the sun to dry. The street of silence. The madrasa or university with its harmonizing mosaics, where the teachings are given by priests chosen by the people. Only boys are allowed to attend. A gruesome past haunts the gate of the heads. Here, up to a few years ago, the severed heads of victims of war were hung. Baskets in which to send the sinister relics to other towns were made in the shadow of the grim walls. And as you see, the industry thus begun still goes on. A gray-bearded storyteller is recounting the immemorial happenings that have grown classic in the telling. While motionless, his enraptured listeners drink in the magic tale, lost in a maze of brilliant adventures far removed from their own drab lives. The Tuhib, native doctor, sits by the wayside awaiting victims, shall we say. Hyena's head ground to powder is but one of the strange cures. Water for irrigation purposes is raised by means of wheels with revolving buckets, such as this. Now for a visit to some ruins, but not the kind of ruins you expect. No. Here we see the ruin of some perfectly good linen at the hands, pardon me, the feet of the Moorish laundryman. This is where the town washes its dirty linen. Rough washing, we might call it. Here's the answer to a moot question. Where did our laundries become so expert in putting saw edges on collars and tearing buttons off shirts? They're not all Chinamen. No, the others must have learned their trade in Morocco. The lattice-covered streets, with the sunlight piercing through in spots and patches, casting weird shadows on the passers-by. Through a doorway, we see a garden in bloom. A lovely palace, today deserted and silent. The pool of the harem, its crystal water reflecting the soft colors of the mosaics, which once echoed the chatter of the Sultan's favorites. Like a flock of birds, the hooded women gather on the rooftops, for the men are making merry in the streets below, and their wives look on in silence. Farewell, thou ancient land of the moor.